Who doesn't want Jesus to walk with them, right? Good morning. So you may have seen a couple of the announcements, but I'd just like to uh, highlight some of them. First of all, the Cookie Walk this year raised $1,698. So that was pretty amazing in and of itself. Um, secondly, there is uh, tonight, today, right after church, downstairs, I believe we're going to have a few games. And so we're hoping that this will be an intergenerational time, that you'll stick around and we can play some games together. I can't wait to see Don uh, play uh, Candyland with somebody. It's just, that's just something yeah, that... Charades. charades today, okay. So we'll just see wh how everybody does with charades, right, Jean? <coughs> Looking forward to it. I know how much he just... <laughs> February 2nd, uh, not next week, but the week after that is the congregational meeting in which we will receive the budget and then also review uh, the annual reports that are happening in the church. Um, the re annual reports, by the way, are due tomorrow. Um, and is there anything else that I have missed? Okay, any prayers um, that we need to be uh, lifting up? Oh. Yes. So Dick Brick is still in the hospital. He's been there for over a week, right? Yeah, well, started Sunday the 5th. Okay. He's been there for almost two weeks now. Yeah. I saw Jean Taylor this uh, past week, I think. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, and uh, he is progressing, progressing to, to make that passage that we will all make. So to be uh, mindful of Jean and uh, mindful of uh, his daughter and son during this time. He's in a hospital bed in his room at Independence Village. So hospice has been and will continue to be involved. Anything else before we enter into worship together, continue in our worship together? Please stand for the call to worship if you are able. God does not look for sacrifices or offerings, but for open ears and hearts which gently speak the truth. Grand gestures and offerings are not required, just a heartfelt delight in walking in the way of God. My friends, in our midst today is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. God has put a new song in our mouths, placed a new melody on our tongues. Let us sing of our desire to follow the Lamb of God. Join us in your hymn, hymnal in your pew, hymn number 377, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
may be seated. Confession is not only about the stupid stuff we did yesterday, it is about the magnificent stuff God did while we were yet sinners. So let us enter into this period of confession, first out loud and then in the silence of our hearts, with joy and the assurance of God's love. Together, faithful God, you sent the Baptist to point us to your Son. But too often we point only to ourselves. We point to our worship preferences rather than the God we worship. We point to our privilege rather than the grace that makes us all equal. We point to our values rather than the one who always values everyone. We point to our traditions rather than to the one who calls us to let go. We point to our past rather than to the one who calls us into the future. Forgive us, Lord, for pointing in all the wrong directions. They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus said to them, Come and see. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father and to the Peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us show each other a sign of that peace.
The first scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. You can follow along in your pew Bible. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctioned in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way in all of your speaking and in all of your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for your Lord, for our Lord, Jesus Christ, to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. Thank, this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, it's time for the children's. So what's today? It's change for change, right? We gotta get a couple of 
Now, who hasn't done, who hasn't collected for Change for Change? Do you have, I have, I have some here too. So why do we uh, collect for Change for Change? Do you know? To help people who are without a lot of resources. Yeah, poor people. And, oh my gosh. Oh my, what? Oh my gosh. You've been really collecting a lot of change, haven't you? So who wants, have you, have you done this before? Yeah. Okay. You have to, okay. You want to do this? No. Sure. Yep. You go one side, you go the other side. Which side do you want to go? Okay, you go that side, you go that side. All right. So one of the reasons we collect Change for Change is to help poor people. And what did we get so far? A cow, med kits, and bunk beds. But we had something else, didn't we? There was a water filter. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. And, and, and extra lights, basically. Yeah, people are sick in their hospital. Okay, well, we're we. It's amazing what little change that we gather here, mul kind of multiplies, and all of a sudden, instead of just having, look at what we have. Oh, how much money, how much money do we have here? Well, we gather about. I don't know, Molly. What do you think we gather about? How much you look at that? Oh, this is really, uh, look at that. Whoa. Yeah, we're going to put it all in one. Because then, then Penny and Sandy will know which ones this is, okay, with all the change and with the dollar bills. Because generally it's just been the change that we've done. But we have, we, we got over uh, about $50 a Sunday, a change for change Sunday. So that's a lot of money because it's not just one Sunday, it is every single third Sunday. So that's about $600 a year. Isn't that a lot of money? That's why we're able to do the things that we are doing. And you know what the best part about this is? It's that you guys are showing the church how to lead us in mission, how to help people who are without resources, without a lot, whole lot of money. Sometimes they're just, there's a big tornado that's come through and they need lights in their bathroom. Or sometimes they need, the water isn't safe and so they need water filters. It's pretty amazing what you guys do. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this, for this generosity. Because the children are teaching us how to be generous, Lord in very small ways, but as you know, even a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, grows into a large plant. And so bless these gifts and bless our children that they will become a blessing to this world. In the name of Jesus we pray and let the people say, Amen. And I believe it is... Huh? Is there such thing as a mustard seed? There is such a thing as a mustard seed. Look it up. All right? That's, what, that's, why you, that's why you have moms and dads who have those smartphones. It's always good to have Liz O'Leary here. Thank you, Liz, for being here. Uh, the gospel comes to us from uh, John chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. Listen for God's word. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, 
Look! Here's the Lamb of God. The, dude, the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them, saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to, them, said to him, you have found the Messiah, which we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. Andrew brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of God, you are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, or Rocky. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It seems that a churchgoer wrote a letter to the editor of the newspaper and complained that it made no sense to go to church every Sunday. I've gone for 30 years now, he wrote, and in that time I've heard something like 3,000 sermons. But for the life of me, I can't remember a single one of them. So I think I'm wasting my time and the pastors are wasting theirs by giving sermons at all. This started a real controversy in the letters to the editor column, much to the delight of the editor. It went on for weeks until someone wrote this. I've been married for 30 years now. In that time, my wife has cooked some 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu for a single one of those meals. But I do know this, they all nourished me and gave me the strength I needed to do my work. If my wife had not given me these meals, I would, not be, physic I would be physically dead today. Otherwise, if I had not gone to church, likewise, if I had not gone to church for nourishment, I would be spiritually dead today. As I was growing up, we went to church on Sundays. That's just what we did as a family. My brother, sister, and I would go off to Sunday school, and then on to children's church. My father sang in the adult choir. My mom would come and get us after we were done, and we would go home to have Sunday lunch. And then once a month or so, we would head into Chicago for an outing of some sort, generally museums or music. Sometimes we would visit family friends, Occasionally, we would eat out. It was not until I was in the fifth grade that I began to understand anything about the Bible. Call me a slow learner. Yeah, there were flannel boards of parables, and yeah, and tucked back in my memory is Moses canoeing down the, aisle, uh, down the Nile in a basket. And yeah, if you really sat me down, I would come up with someone named Jesus, but it was all pretty foggy for me. I was interested in other things. Flying kites, playing soccer, baseball, reading biographies, fishing, listening to the radio, hanging out with friends, pretty beaver cleaverish. Sunday school was taught by folks who were good-hearted and doing their best. And then, in fifth grade, my Sunday school teacher was Charlie Hinman. I've talked about him before. Mr. Hinman was a person of faith, and when I think back on my life, he was the first person who stands out as wanting to impart some of his experience, some of what changed him as a person. So what did he do? He had us memorize some Bible passages. Memorize. <laughs> that's an that's a amazing thing in and of itself. Put time and energy into knowing these passages by heart. Yes, we would get a treat. 
when we accomplish this task as well as a gold star. And yes, even in fifth grade, we still wanted a gold star. In his own way, he was pointing us to Jesus, certainly one way to teach. When I turned 16, I was asked by one of the pastors of our church if I'd like to go after school and tutor elementary age children in reading and math. I asked my parents, and they said, sure. So I said, I guess so. The minister drove me down to Onward Neighborhood House in Chicago, and at that time it had been a Polish neighborhood, but Latinx folks were move, starting to move in, a neighborhood in flux with some ethnic te tensions. And for two years on Tuesdays and Thursdays during the school year, I, with some of my friends, drove down the Edens Expressway, spent about 90 minutes helping two to three, three and fourth graders with their homework. Then we got back to the car and hightailed it home for dinner. The children did not live like I did. Their families lacked financial resources. Sometimes their clothes were not clean and their bodies smelled. What I was not aware of at the time is how those children and their stories began to change me, widen my world, Break me out of my privileged bubble. Show me a different slice of life. That experience was life-changing for me. In his own way, that minister pointed me and my friends towards Jesus. Not just the Jesus of the Bible, but the living Jesus who is comfortable around all sorts of people. There are so many other stories I could tell, but almost all of them involve people pointing me towards Jesus, just like John the Baptist in the story today. So who has it been for you? Who has pointed you to Jesus? Let's just take a moment and ponder that. And if you want, take out a pen and write that person or person's name down on your bulletin. You see, we have a faith that has been passed down not just by our parents, but more importantly by the community that gathers each Sunday. I don't know about you, but my parents never talked about religion at home or ever opened a Bible at home to read. My dad sang carols and played hymns at times, but no family Bible reading or study. In other words, it took others to point me to Jesus to both the words and person of Jesus. You see, it does take a village to raise a child. That's why we do church. Oh, we can put on our crabby pants and talk about how the world is going to the dogs or how things are not what they used to be like, but that is all pointing to exterior things. The question is still, how are we being changed? To what are we being called? Where might we practice our faith? How is the way we live our life pointing to Jesus, in other words? And how is Jesus drawing us deeper into his way of life? 
Oh, it's fun to complain and bemoan what once was. But when Jesus began his ministry, he did not set up shop on the Nazareth road and wait for people to stop by and chat with him. No, Jesus began to go out and meet folks where they were. Jesus did not form committees, as important as they are. He gathered people to join him on the road. Jesus always is on the move, talking with people who were sick or lame, blind, or suffered from leprosy, talking to people shunned by good, upstanding folks. Jesus also talked to the connected and the rich, people that invited him in for Sunday dinner. He grieved over the heart of heart, the miserly. He celebrated generosity and open-handedness. His was a ministry of communion, connection, and compassion. John the Baptist says it so clearly. Look, the Lamb of God. He's saying, open your eyes to see this amazing person. All I can do is point him out to you. You have to make the decision to turn, to turn and check him out. When we make that decision to turn from the direction in which we are going and follow Jesus to see where Jesus resides, he eventually turns to us and asks a simple question. What are you looking for? What are we looking for? Such a good question. The answers to that question are both on the level of each individual person here, as well as for our church. What are we looking for? If we listen to what Tom played in the very beginning of the service, I want Jesus to walk with me. If we listen to Liz, Lord, here I am. The answers to that question will guide our life. What are we looking for? So take a few moments now to think about and write down your answer to that question. What are you looking for in life? What I suggest each of us do during this coming week is to look at and read what we have written. Maybe do that once a day. Maybe even speak that intention out loud, that desire out loud. One of the things that I wrote down that hadn't occurred to me is that what I'm looking for is better weather for the farmers this next farming season. I would not have written that down in years past. That's how you all have changed me. 
I'm much more aware of our farmers and their needs. When we do this, when we speak these things out loud or even just read them, we allow God the time and space to speak to us. So let us remain with Jesus as the disciples remained with him. And then, if it's appropriate, and you find yourself in conversation with a friend, you tell them what's been happening, what you have been doing this week. You don't try to convince them. You just tell them. Andrew did. He went and told his brother Peter and then brought him to Jesus and the world has never been the same. What are we looking for? Who are the people who appointed us to Jesus? Let us pray. Lord, this story seems so simple. We've heard it time and time again. And yet, when we pause and linger with it, we realize how profound it is that the disciples found the place where Jesus dwells and stayed with him there, lingered with him there. And we're so filled with the newness that he brought that they just had to go and tell someone else. It reminds us of the resurrection when Jesus appears to Mary and she goes and tells the disciples what she has seen and heard. Somehow, Lord, you change us when we decide to give to you our desires, our hopes. And so, Lord, Help us remain with you during this coming week and tell you of our desires and then to hear you talk back to us. For we worship a God not who was then, but a God who is now. A God who waits on us. A God who answers. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And let the people say, Amen. Let us stand and sing hymn number 847 in response to the word of God in our midst.
time to take up our morning offering as an act of worship.
God of grace, help us live in your kingdom of love where there are no enemies, only brothers and sisters, and kindness is the air we breathe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, this is a moment when we pause and we address you directly. We come with open hearts, with hearts that both grieve, are troubled, and hearts that rejoice. For this is a world of yours that is not fully realized, but is becoming. And so we lift up our brothers and sisters in Lebanon, our Christian brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers and sisters, our Muslim brothers and sisters, in their conflict. We remember the people of uh, Hong Kong as well and pray for peace positive peace, which is the presence of justice in both of those places in our world. We think of the many people who are undergoing persecution for their faith, for the Presbyterians that are in Iraq. Yes, Presbyterians in Iraq, Lord, who would have thunk? We lift up the many people that we know who are working for peace on the West Bank and in Israel. In Rwanda and Burundi. For there are many people all over this world, Lord, that are putting their time and effort and their brain power into creating peace. They're peace makers, Lord. So we lift them up at this time. We're grateful for the people who are first responders in our world. The EMTs, the police officers, the firefighters, we ask protection for them as well. We ask for sensitivity in, in figuring out what is happening in crisis situations. We pray for our servicemen and women around the country, around the world. Pray that you will bring them back home safely, Lord. And Lord, we pray for our own community, our own church. We remember Dick Brick He's in the hospital trying to battle, get better from deep case of pneumonia. For Mike, who has, for uh, Mike's cousin Tyler, who has spinal meningitis, it's up in Madison. For Jean Taylor, who is making that transition from this life to life eternal from your life here to your life there. And we thank you, Lord, for his faithfulness of his daughter and son and for his friends who surround him at this point. Lord, there are many people that have asked us to pray for them. There are many celebrations that are happening not just birthdays, not just my friend Sally who celebrated her 100th birthday 
yesterday. But also many other ways that people are finding hope in this world. We pray for the PNC as they continue their work in discovering who is the next called and installed minister here at the church. We ask your blessings on them. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We please stand and let's sing our last hymn, number 39, Great is Our Faithfulness. So what are we looking for? What am I looking for? Talk to God this day, this week. Remember what you wrote down. Review that. And let's see what the answers are next week. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit remain with us now and always. Amen.
my cold weather. It's below zero. I answer to them all. <laughs> it's nice to see you, Liz. I've never thought of you as